Okay guys, up next on the podcast we have the legend himself, John Wayne Parr, former 10-time world champion. But before we go into this episode, we want to speak to you about our new sponsor, Caldera Lab, a high-performance skincare company. Caldera is backed by a leading clinical trial where 9 out of 10 men experience healthier and visibly improved skin. Today we have an exclusive offer for you, so you can understand why so many men trust Caldera Lab for their skincare needs. Use code KICKINGIT at calderalab.com for 20% off all their best products. Caldera Lab creates high performance men's skincare products by combining pharmaceutical grade science along with nature's purest and most potent ingredients. Kicking off their stellar skincare selection, we have the Regimen Bundle, a twice a day routine to transform your skin. What you're going to find inside this bundle is the clean slate, the base layer and the good. The clean slate is what you use to start your day. It's a balancing cleanser that uses gentle plant based cleansing leaving all skin types refreshed. Secondly, we've got the base layer. The base layer is the nutrient-dense fortifying moisturiser that hydrates your skin and absorbs fast, leaving you with a matte finish so you can start your day confidently. And last but not least, the good. This is your go-to at night before bed and a clinically proven multifunctional serum that helps your skin look tighter and smoother, as well as to help reduce visibility of wrinkles and fine lines. Go to at Caldera Lab on Instagram, drop them a follow and check out their products. And also visit their website at calderalab.com and remember to use code KICKINGIT for 20% off. Okay, uh, we are joined by absolute Muay Thai royalty today. Um, been looking forward to getting you on for a while, mate. Absolute legend, 10 times world champion, uh, one of the greatest uh, foreign fighters of all time. Uh, one of the heroes of mine when I was coming up through the ranks, uh, Mr. John Wayne Parr. How are you, mate? Thank you for, for dialing in. Mate, thank you so much. Uh, it was such a pleasure hanging out in Colorado, and then here we are again. <laughs> yeah, we had fun. We had fun. Right, now, this is 100%. I'm, I don't want to rush this because you've got so many stories. You've had so many wild rides through your career. You've fought every, all the best of the best fighters. you lived in Thailand. You've done it all. I don't want to rush it, so I, I, because if we just rush through it, we're going to miss loads of good shit out. So it's going to have to be a, it's going to have to be a two part, mate, because you've done that much in your career, and you've had that much yeah. of a, a, a like you've you were Australian boxing champion as well, I believe. Like you, you've yeah, you've had a, you've had a lot of pro boxing fights. You've done it all in Muay Thai. You lived stayed in Thailand. You you signed with K One. You fought all the best fighters, and I want to I want to try and get it all in. Um, so just starting back, like right at the start, then because I, let's get let's just go from there and go through because you had a wild journey. Why Muay Thai? Uh, yeah, it was it was the closest martial arts to my house at the time. Okay. So so I started Taekwondo when I was eleven, and I thought Taekwondo, this is it. I want to be a Taekwondo guy. And then you see the footage of the guys in Korea doing the carders all in line. Oh, how good does that look? I want to go to Korea. <laughs> and then um. And then uh, uh, about a year and a half later, the school closed down. And then um, about six months after that, uh, 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 kickboxing came to the same hall that Taekwondo was in. Uh, I'll give this kickboxing a try until I find another Taekwondo school. Uh, and did my first class and it's like, ha, oh, this is amazing. And, and then at the same time, the movie Kickboxers came out with Van Damme, yeah. going to Thailand. It's like, instead of going to Korea, now I want to go to Thailand. Thailand looks like the place to go to. So. And then- um, How old were you, were you yeah, then? So, uh, 13. Oh, yeah. 13. And then, uh, so we moved house. Uh, I had my first fight at 14. Uh, kickboxing fight at 14. And then uh, we moved to Melbourne. And then you couldn't fight in Melbourne until you're over 18. So I had a year of just, just keep training and try and get as good as I can in the gym before I do have another fight. And then uh, a year later, we moved to Queensland. And Queensland is just like um, anything goes. Yeah. <laughs> Cowboy Central, free for all. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah, then from that moment forward, from the age of um, uh, 16, just like up and up and up. Yeah, we took off after then. So very, very, very lucky. Yeah, so how many kickboxing fights have you had before you actually started fighting just pure Muay Thai then? Uh, my one, two, three, uh, with elbows and knees. It just just kickboxing, how many kickboxing did you have? Uh, three. Three, oh, okay. Three kickboxing, and then I started fighting with knees once I moved to Queensland, and then started fighting with elbows, uh, my sixth fight. Oh, you know, so, the, you're fast track then, really, aren't you? Because most Westerners, oh, then, they, they have they have quite a, a quite a few amateur fights and stuff and get used to it, And but six fights, you're still basically a novice at that, at six fights, aren't you, really? So you got thrown straight in the deep end. It gets better. It gets better. So uh, I won my first Australian title at 17. Um, I fought a gentleman um, who was a little bit older. I was lucky to get the second round knockout. And then uh, my my trainer was also my promoter. 
And he thought, I think you're ready for a tie after my fifth fight. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think you're ready. So he matches me with a kid with like 100 fights. Uh, and then and sure enough, so I, I only just turned 18. So we've come out, the bell's rung. Uh, I've come out with my, 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 my 18 year old flurry. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> uh, and then the tie just dropped his hands and he just smiled. And then he put his hands up and just come and pull me. And I said, oh, no. I'm <laughs> and then, um, so he, 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 threw a, he threw a really hard leg kick and he kicked me so hard that I lost my balance. And I, and I caught the second bottom rope with my hand. And then, uh, and then he doubled up the leg kick and, and his whole shin went across my, uh, his whole shin went across my face. Uh, out cold, the lights are all way, swaying in front of me. I thought, oh, fuck this, I'm not getting up. Yeah. Um, so I stayed down. And then um, I thought to myself, you know what? I never want to fight another tie again. That's it. I'm done. No more ties. I'm, <laughs> yeah. that's, I'm, uh, I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> these, these, guys, these guys are too much killers. Uh, no way they want to put in that certain circumstances ever again. And then little did I know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> A couple of years later, I was there living the dream. So crazy. <laughs> crazy, crazy how life works. Yeah. So obviously you're saying there, like, obviously you, you didn't want to fight any more ties again. What flipped the switch? Because obviously you went to live in Thailand and that you were going to yeah. fight all the ties and you went to live and train and breathe and do it all how they do it. What flipped the switch and made you change your mind? Uh, so I was very lucky that um, I got sponsored. Um, I, I, I had a few more fights. I won the... Uh, I was on a bit of a tear. I had a couple of knockout wins and then uh, won the South Pacific title. It was a very hard fight. I got dropped in the second, got an eight count, um, managed to hang on, and then I ended up winning by knockout with 30 seconds to go in the fifth. Nice. And then my Thai, my, my sponsor, who's Thai, he, um, he said, oh, last night you showed a lot of heart. I, I think you have the potential to go all the way. Um, how would you like to go to Thailand? Oh, I'd love to go to Thailand. I said, I'll tell you what I do. Um, all you have to do is organize your passport, then I'll do the rest. So um, I went to the post office, applied for a passport, passport come, went down to the restaurant. Hey, Richard, my, my ref passport came. So he grabs me by the wrist, leads me down to the travel agent. I want one six month open ticket, please. And he go, and then like pretty much on the spot, he said, um, look, uh, everyone goes for a week or a month, and, but the, it doesn't get um, in the system. If you go for six months and then you'll have a more muscle memory and you're more Thai culture. So um, if you can last six months, you make me the proudest sponsor in Australia. But if you come back before that, me and you are done. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 I can do it. I can do six months. So I go to the camp. I go to Sijitong first for three months. Wait, how did you find out about Sijitong then? Did you ask around or did you, would you, would you just uh, like? So my Thai trainer, he, his family lived in Pattaya. Okay. And then um, Sijitong was only a 15 minute push bike ride from where, where they're living. So, um, so I get to Thailand, I get introduced to the family, and then uh, well, one of the brothers, uh, you're going to be staying in my room. We're going to share a double bed for the next three months. <laughs> so, yeah, and he was, so yeah, I'm sleeping beside this guy. I have no idea. He can't speak English. I can't speak Thai. And then I'm just, we left side by side for three months. And then um, and I, as much as I loved Siju Tong at the time, uh, there was an influx of Westerners because no other gyms wanted flungs in their, in their in gyms back then because they we were the bad guys. Yeah. Nah, no for long, no for long. No, no, no. We no teach you. No, what, no. what year were this in then? How long ago were this? How old were you? Uh, uh, 1996. No, 96, was, uh, 19, yeah, yeah. 19 years old. Yeah. And then um, I stayed in Siu Tong and then uh, I'd get three rounds in the pads and then I'd do 30 rounds in the bag and it'd be time to go home. So the, the Westerners wouldn't, West, the, the Westerners would have to clinch the Westerners. The Westerners had to spar the Westerners. And the, the, the Thai stayed in their own ring and their own and their own sort of separated themselves. Yeah. The Westerners were the money, but the Thais were doing they were being famous over there. So um I thought, oh screw this, I'm I'm not getting any I'll I'll change, I want to change. I I got it, I am not getting anywhere. So uh, a friend of mine at the time, his name was Timor, he was there, he was he was a regular, he was friends with Danny Bill and um he was backwards and forwards all the time. And he said, Let's go to jockey gym, let's go to jockey. So um, we jumped on a oh no, sorry. I ended up having a fight on the uh, 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 Songan, Songan Festival. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, open stadium out in the car park. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, I'm the last fight of the night. So, uh, no one's seen me fight before. And somehow or other, because I'm the Westerner, I was the draw card. So, um, and then as I'm, as I'm walking to the ring, the promoter says, hey, if you knock this kid out with an elbow, I'll give you an extra 1,500 baht. 
<laughs> Deal. Oh, holy shit. Holy <laughs> shit. So, uh, so, so the whole fight, I'm like, elbow, 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 elbow. End up, end up stopping him with elbow round four. Oh, nice. So I got my, my, my thousand baht prize money <laughs> and my 15,000, uh, uh, 1500 uh, tip. So I walked away with two and a half, two and a half thousand. So just for, to, for uh, all the English listeners who were wondering how much two and a half thousand baht is, it's about 40 pounds. It's not a lot, is it? Like, do you know yeah. what I mean? The kids these days who are all getting signed the one championship straight away. They don't know how lucky they are because we were just Crazy. doing it for fucking peanuts like that. When you when you go to live in Thailand like that, you got to start from yeah. the bottom, aren't you, and work your way up to the good purses. Oh, that's so crazy! Yeah, so so a, 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 a thousand baht was fifty Aussie, and then so I made so I made one hundred and fifty dollars for my first fight, but already made my mind up. Oh, sorry, I won the fight. I come back and all the ties go, hey, you're really good. <laughs> now, now, now we're going to start training you properly. And it's like, uh, I'm, I've already made my decision. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm out of here. So I end up a couple of days later, jump on the bus, we go to jockey gym. And, and the same again, where me and the, uh, Timor, the only Westerners there. So it's all ties. Was Somrat there at this point? Uh, no. No. Oh, no, yeah. no. Um, so they do three hours of tie pads and then um we would be the last on the pads and then it was all half-hearted and even that was terrible mm. and then luckily for me um sanctin Noy came to australia to fight uh johnson okay. yeah, John, they, they 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 flew together on the plane they're sitting beside each other on the plane <laughs> they were telling each other their injuries because they thought they were going to fight uh, australians when they got here and then when they got here the promoter said hey by the way you're fighting each other <laughs> and like, ah, geez. so uh uh, same thing was here with the Thai team for uh, seven days. And while he was here, Richard was taking care of them every day, bringing them rice and um, giving them pocket money mm. and then buying them like Oakley glasses and you believe my jeans and just looking after them. Yeah. And then uh, after the fight, Richard said, Hey, is there any chance you can look after my Westerner when you get back to Thailand? And like, ah, Westerners, ah, oh, please. We've never mm. had a Westerner at our gym before. We're not really, nah. And then Richard ended up begging them, ah, oh, fine. So um, when Sandin got back to Australia, um, he came to the jockey gym, knock on the gate, Sanctin's at the door. I'm looking for a, a, a Wayne. And I said, holy shit, that's Sanctin Noy. And then, um, yeah, I'm in the taxi. And then next minute, I'm getting to know him in the taxi. And then uh, I got to the camp. So Sanctin gives me a, a, a quick rundown of the gym. All right, so here's your toilet with no toilet paper, the squat <laughs> toilet. Here's how you wipe your hand with your butt, uh, with the water. Um, that t- takes, takes me out to the boxer room. Um, okay, you'll be sleeping on the floor next to 10 other boxes side by side. Uh, all your meals are on the floor as well, so no furniture. Um, everything's like old school ties in mm. Thailand. Um, so we train three hours in the morning, three and a half hours in the afternoon, um, sometimes seven days a week. Uh, and then, yeah, luckily for me, I end up having, um, end, end up having uh, five fights that year for five wins. Nice. So I've come back to Australia and then... Uh, I started working in the restaurant, cleaning glass, cleaning plates and picking up plates and doing everything. And then luckily for me, the, the, uh, the Thai camp that I was staying at, um, they rang Richard. Um, hey, we think your Aussie boy has a lot of potential. Is there any chance you can send him back to Thailand again? So Richard's like, hey, you want to go back to Thailand? I'd love to go back to Thailand. <laughs> All right. So the, the first one was six months. That was cute. This time you have to promise me one year. Oof. Oh. Same deal. If you come back before one year, me and you are done. It's like, ah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I can do it. I can do it. I'll yeah. stay. I'll stay. I can do it. I can do it. So I go back to St. Tens and then, um, uh, yeah. So we, uh, about three weeks into training, I'm um, St. Tens fighting in a massive show out in the middle of our uh, pitch, which is about a three hour drive. So we get there and then, um, same thing goes the way in. And then, um, um, song Chai, the promoter, he's like very annoyed. He goes, ah, Danny Bill was supposed to be here. Danny Bill was uh, the main event. Um, I've got money off the government to promote a Westerner. There's no mm. Westerner here. What are we going to do? Yeah, so just so if anyone don't know, around that time, Danny Bill was one of the, the greatest Westerners around. Wasn't he? He, 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 he was such super, a brilliant technician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that, um, so my, tra- my trainer goes, he'll fight. <laughs> and then uh, I'm Thanks. like, what? Thanks, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, right, he goes, yeah, yeah, he'll, he'll fight tomorrow. He, he's good. He'll fight. And Song Chai is like, oh, I can't put you against Danny Bill's opponent because he's a killer. I've never seen you fight. So um, I'll tell you what I do. Does anyone in this room want to fight the Westerner? And I swear, <laughs> four, four, 40 hands. Yeah, yeah. Away. And I'm like, oh. So then they did the one where everyone stand beside him, see who's closest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, you, you and you, you're done. You, you're fighting John Wayne. You're fighting Wayne tomorrow. So um, uh, he was from, uh, uh, well, anyway, 
Um, so I ended up winning, winning the first four rounds. Fifth round, I get a massive cut. Keep going. Uh, end up winning decisively, uh, even with the cut. Um, got, got the points. I go back in the change room, and then Song Chai came in the camera. He goes, oh, you're really good. Um, from this moment forward, you're going to be one of my fighters. From this, this moment, this moment, on. it's like, holy shit. So again, holy just so to put it in, uh, this into perspective, Song Chai is the... He, he was the promoter back then, wasn't he? He was the one who he put on the biggest shows, the biggest cards in Thailand. And if you, yeah, he always yeah. put on the, the special cards and the special shows. And if you you wanted to like break your way up, you wanted to fight on his shows, didn't you? That were the... He, he pretty much uh, had Lumpini three three nights a week. Yeah. Uh, he had like two or three different TV shows. He had a couple of radio shows. He pretty much owned the Moise Yam newspaper that came in every day. Yeah. Uh, he, was the, he was the man. He had every single superstar sign with him. And then um, if you want a TV time, he was the guy to go to because he was the one who could make you a, a star. Yeah. So um, so lucky for me. Um, oh, so so I beat that kid. Um, and then we go back to the change room and his trainer's absolutely furious. Why did you lose the Westerner? That guy was <laughs> shit. He was terrible. Even I could beat that guy. That guy was nothing. So then Song Chai was walking past and he heard him. Hey, you reckon you can beat him? Oh, I reckon I'd smash him. All right. Do you want to come out of retirement and fight him in six weeks? <laughs> Let, let's, let's go. Uh, so next minute, um, every single newspaper, oh, his name was uh, Some Luck. Come, uh, no, not Some Luck. His name was Lakte. Lakte. Yeah. Lakte Munzalin. Lakte. And um, he, his uh, fight name was Punch Out of Hell with, uh, Break Out of Hell with Punches. Oof. His nickname. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, Matt Nalokdag. Um, I was like, oh, fucking hell. Someone can break out of hell with their punches. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a pretty... So, uh, so we we worked every day, and of course he hadn't fought in about three or four years. Our game plan was to had lots of leg kicks because his legs going to be a bit softer now, and everything else, and lots of pressure, trying to work his uh, depleting of his cardio, take out his legs. Um, so it was one of those outdoor shows live on Thai TV. And this time there was uh, sixty thousand people in this park. It was crazy, and uh, oh. only my second second big fight for Song Chai. Yeah. Like, holy shit! Holy! Had to get a police escort from the change room to get through the crowd to get to the ring. Where were it? Were it at San awesome. Malang? Were it at that park? Uh, this was this was in uh, Satun. Oh, okay, right, uh, nice. the south, south, south south of Thailand, yeah. near Malaysia. So um, yeah, outside and uh, end up stopping him in uh, second. Hmm. So now Song Chai goes, oh, you proved your worth now. Your next fight's going to be at Lumpini. I was like, mm. holy shit. Because <laughs> at that stage, no, uh, no Aussies had fought at Lumpini before. Right. So I was like, oh, this is the, this is my, the dream to be the first Aussie. So uh, they matched me with another um, uh, Muslim guy. So they'd be, this is my third Muslim guy. In like, in like <laughs> Doing a number on the whole gym. <laughs> yeah. So um, so my main thing was like the, to win a course. But um, in my head, uh, as I crossed the ropes with Lumpini, as my foot touched the canvas, in my, in my head, I'd won. Yeah. Because I'd be the first Aussie then. So that, that's all that mattered to me, being the first Aussie. So I got out there. First round wasn't too good. Second round wasn't the best. And then um, I ended up getting a bit of a growling in the corner. What are you doing? Mm. Why are you letting me attack first? You be first. Stop waiting. Stop being lazy. Go. And as soon as I did that, yeah, the whole fight just changed in. And then um, ended, up, ended up stopping him in the fourth. So I was like, oh, this is amazing. This mm. is so cool. Yeah, and then... Um, so that, I think that was my my ninth straight win in Thailand. So from zero to nine straight, it's like holy shit, holy shit. How many fights then, in total had you had here? Because obviously these ties were going to have hundred to hundred and fifty, two hundred plus fights out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, uh, when I got the first got to Thailand, I'd only had thirteen fights in Australia. <sighs> wow. So 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 now I'm on the 20, 25, 26 nice. fights, yeah. and then, and then uh, so they they send out a, a reporter from Moisey magazine, said, "Oh, we want to do we want to do an article on you." Oh, beautiful. So they asked me all these questions and everything else. All right, so grab your shorts and your mom We're going to go to the park and take some photos in the park. Oh, cool. So we're, we're out there and um, so I'm trying to look all stuff. And then then I, I, I can speak a little bit of Thai by the stage. Mm. And uh, the, the reporter's like, all right, now look nice and strong because this is for the cover. I'm like, uh, excuse me? He goes, oh, he didn't know. Oh, this is for the cover. Mm. Like, Holy shit, no way. That, that, again, again, then, uh, this is a massive, massive deal. Moe Sayam is Diggy magazine in Thailand that you want to be on the front of him. It? It's like the it's like the well in England I'd say like the like the the racing post for all the races and yeah. stuff like that. Didn't I? I mean it's the main sporting magazine in Thailand, isn't it? 
And then from from what I know, I was the first Westerner and they've ever been featured on the cover before too. Mm. Oh, I was nice. actually like, oh yeah, it was crazy. And then um, you know what it's like with all the outdoor news agents where they just put the magazines yeah. up. So wherever you go on the bus, I could see my magazine like every couple of meters. There's my magazine. There's my magazine. There's my magazine. Mm. It's like just pinching. It's like holy yeah. shit, this is happening. This is really <laughs> happening. <laughs> and then um, so I went my nine straight. And then one day we're sitting in the in the lounge room watching the Thai boxing on the weekend, and and then uh, the, the the commentators are announcing in a few weeks' time there's a massive show coming up. Um, Seng Tanoi will be fighting Gang da 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 for this title, and and this person will fight this person, uh, and John Wayne Parr will be fighting Orono Pomungabu, <laughs> and the, the whole the whole place just goes silent, and everyone just stares at me. And I'm like, what, what's going on? <laughs> Yeah, I had no idea. I, I, I just, I, that's again, that's I, I had, typical uh, Thailand, though. In it, the, 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 the shit like this just gets dropped on you when you don't know. I, I had no one knew I was fighting Orono until I announced it on TV. Mm. And John Wayne's fighting Orono, and everyone's just gone. So <laughs> I've had nine wins. Because I, so for me, I've had nine wins. I've been, oh, it's just another tie. Yeah. And they go, no, 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 no. No, yeah. no, 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 no. This is Orono. You're fighting Orono. Ah, oh, it's just Orono. And then, um, so yeah, we, we train really hard and, um, so Sang Ten was fighting on the, the same card as me as well. He was the main event. I was the semi main. So I fly at first, and then um, yeah, I, it was one of those ones where you're weighing at eight, and then you fight at one in the afternoon. That's tough. So only, it's oh, very. I've only ever done that time. once, and that was it. Was so hard. It was very so very hard. hard. Yeah. So, so um, we didn't. We, it was the first time at that stadium, and we didn't know where to to rest, and we didn't know how to eat. So I got one one fried rice. And then, uh, and then that was supposed to do me until my fight. Yeah. So, uh, it was a slow shit. So then, uh, the first round is not so bad. Second round, Orono throws me in the clinch, and then I get back up. And then thirty seconds later, he throws me down again. As I'm standing up, I feel my soul leave my body. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you, know, you know, you know that that feeling where it's like oh, I'm, I got nothing left. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, <laughs> so I, I try to go for it, and then uh, Orono ends up cut me once, cut me twice, and then I end up with a. Uh, they end up stopping the fight in the third round from from too much blood, and, um, so I end up going to the hospital. I'm getting stitched up, and all of a sudden I hear Sangden's voice, and I go, "Ah, hey, Sangden, how'd you go? Did you win?" He goes, "What do you reckon?" And I, and I have a quick look up. The next minute he's got a whole half of his head. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so we so we um, end up end up being on the front cover once again. So we're both from the same camp, both fighting in the same show, and we both got stopped round three with our elbows. <laughs> so it's one of those big ah. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Then, uh, how many stitches did you get in that fight? And because what's your stitch count on now? It's absolutely insane. And you've got about 360 uh, or something. Uh, 350. 350, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's that's then, crazy. Uh, yeah, that, so, so that one, I got 21. <laughs> so, so, so so my first fight, I got eight. My second fight, I got 21. And then a few fights later, I came back to Australia. I fought a gentleman from England. And he cut, cut me um, five cuts. And that with 54 stitches in one fight. So, wow. so in, in three fights, I've got something like 86 stitches in my head already. <laughs> so, yeah, it's insane. But, um, yeah, but, but it's one of those ones where you get to the stage where we're at, where you're expected to go to the hospital. I, there's no fights where it's like, um, I, I know that I'm going to go to the hospital after the fight. And win, lose, or draw. It's, so something's going to happen. We're just going to take a short break to give a shout out to our sponsors, Manscaped. If you're anything like me, you probably haven't purchased a Father's Day gift yet. But not to fear, the leaders in Below the Waist Grooming are here, and I'm talking about our friends at Manscaped. They're saving the day yet again with a total package for the father figure in your life this year. It's time to upgrade his game from waist to face with this exclusive offer. Have him join the 8 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get 20% off and free shipping with the code KICKINIT. If you're new to the show and you don't know what Manscaped is... Manscaped is dedicated to helping you increase your confidence and level up your full body grooming game and the ultimate Father's Day MVP with the Performance Package 4.0. Inside the Performance Package 4.0, he'll find the Essential Law Mower, waterproof cordless body trimmer and a ton of other liquid formulations to round out his grooming routine. The trimmer features a ceramic blade designed to cut hair on loose skin and to reduce grooming accidents thanks to advanced skin safe technology. The Lawn Mower 4.0 will be a game changer for trimming in his sensitive areas. Also, let's face it, nobody likes nose hairs, so the package also consists with the Weed Whacker 2.0 nose and ear trimmer. This is the perfect Father's Day gift and a gift he will actually use. This beautiful bundle also comes with the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, 
crop reviver toner, performance boxer shorts, and a travel bag to hold all these goodies. Listen, we all know dads love their comfort. If his grooming routine is already dialed, make sure to hook him up with the Manscapes 2.0 boxers. These are without a doubt the best boxers for men of all ages with their jewel pouch designed to comfortably care for his specific regions. Whether he's mowing the lawn, going to the gym, playing football or golfing in the sun, these moisture wicking boxers breathe without breaking a sweat. As always, get 20% off and free shipping with the code KICKINGIT at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code KICKINGIT. Yeah. So obviously then we're stepping in there with Orono, obviously you've gone up from fighting some good level ties into the, the elite, haven't you? Because around that time, Orono was, everyone was terrified of him. To be honest, he was, he was fighting Deckers and all them guys and having, and he was a top of the food chain. I worry when you when you went into that, did you think, right, I need to up my game after the fight, did you think, right, I need to up my game a little bit here so I can really compete with these guys? Oh, for sure. So I, a big uh, song chat after the fight, oh, please let me rematch. I know I can do better. I know I can do better. And then he said, oh, no, we've got to work your way back up now. You, you come down a couple of spots. Now we're gonna... So then I fought his um, teammate, uh, uh, Ninta Guy in Pomongabun. Mm. And then we ended up fighting um, twice. First one was a cracker. I, I should have won that one, but they gave it to him being in Thailand. Yeah. Then we rematched at Lumpini. And then, um, yeah, he ended up stopping with leg kicks in that one. So, yeah, but um, uh, then eventually that was 1997. Uh, ended up having nine fights that year for... Um, seven wins mm. and end up winning the, the strongest Westerner in Thailand in 1997. Nice. So that, was, that was amazing. Yeah. That was so cool. So then, um, and then the year 2000, so fast forward a little bit, year 2000, um, I'm supposed to fight a Thai on their King's birthday and then superstar Thai, everything else. And then uh, another Thai special. So I get to the weigh-in and, and Song Chai is fuming again. Ah, uh, So Masato was supposed to fight Orono. But he doesn't want to fight Orono because he's scared Orono has hepatitis B. So he wants to fight someone else now. So Orono needs an opponent. I tell you what, instead of fighting uh, Duanizan tomorrow, you're going to fight Orono instead. I said, like, oh, what? Because at that stage, Orono was my most painful fight. And he yeah. was my, he was my, my, ah, my, ah. Yeah, the, the boogeyman, yeah. Ah. <laughs> the boogeyman, yeah. the boogeyman. And then, um, and then uh, I, I, was, I was getting ready for an orthodox fighter. And, so, and, yeah, and South Orono Paul, yeah. Southport. So in 24 hours, I've got going to change everything. So I ran sent in the, um, I said, sent in, um, Song Chong wants you to fight Oh No tomorrow. And Song, and Sang Tin was like, that's amazing. That's perfect. Um, I have the perfect game plan. I'll tell you tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't want you, I don't want you going over your head too much. So, um, I'll tell you tomorrow. So you get a good night's sleep instead. Ah, good night's sleep. That's the last thing I heard. <laughs> so. I'm shitting myself. I'm so, so terrified that I'm fighting Orono again. And then um, the next morning, I wake up all excited. Okay, so same thing. What's the game plan? I said, well, you know how Orono is Sapo? Well, I think tomorrow you should be Sapo too. That way, when he throws leg kicks, your check will be in front. So it'll be ready to check and it'll be easy to counter. I said, that's terrible. That's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's 24 hours. You want me to be Sapo? I've never trained Sapo. Yeah. And then, um, so now it's throwing my head in. And now I'm thinking, I can't do it. I can't be Southpaw. I'll, I'll try, but I, if I, I just go orthodox. And then I'm going through this war. So then I get my hands wrapped. And then I get the shorts on, shadow boxing, and thinking, I can't do this. I get on stage. And then, uh, all right, they call my name. I'm walking down the runway towards the ring thinking, fuck, fuck. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then you got a minute there's a hundred thousand there, there so this is the, the busiest show that you will ever see in your life it is absolutely insane the amount of people who are all in this park on the queen's birthday it's cra especially back then as well it, it's not so much now but back then it was unbelievable wasn't it and then i'm um, so so um so while i'm waiting on stage i'm watching some like come sing he's he's the fight before me so i'm watching some like belt some guy from uh, morocco yeah <laughs> and then um and then and then i'm next and then, um, so the first round starts, I'll, I'll start Southpaw. So Orono throws a kick and I counter straight away. And he does something else and I counter. Does it, and all of a sudden I'm winning. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> so then, um, so I stay Southpaw second round, third round, fourth round. I stay Southpaw fifth round. And then uh, end of the fight, I've, I've nearly won every round. It's like, and then um, convincingly, hand gets raised. Next minute, um, I'm getting my, the belt put around me by the Thai um, generals. I was in front of a hundred thousand ties on Thai TV to be to actually win my first title. Um, oh, so you remember the movie Kickboxer? Yeah. So you remember at the start and when they're doing pads in the park? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I remember that. 
Well, that's the park where I won. Yeah, the, Sanam Luang. Uh, Sam, uh, Sanam Luang. Yeah, yeah. Sanam Luang. So, yeah, so, so I've got history there as well. Yeah, so, Stan yeah. Dam wins the thing and then um, it's, it, it's so good when people can uh, remember, oh, I remember that park. Oh, I fought in that park. You must have so, shocked yeah, yourself that day then, like never ever fighting Southpaw at all and then you just beat one of the best fighters on, on the planet by crazy. doing it. Uh, it it's crazy so, so, that the Thai actually believed in you that much as well. It's, it's like, yeah, he'll be able to do that without even second-guessing yeah. you as well, which is, that must have felt good, you know what I mean? Ah, no problem for, for Wayne, you know what yeah. I mean? It, it was the best best um, scenario because we had the story of he'd already beat me once and cut me up and then having the rematch and then we, it was like the, the ultimate revenge and then not only did I beat him, but I won his belt as well. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, it was so cool. And then, um, uh, and then the, the uh, 2004, so we're going from 2000, 2004. I've come back to Australia then. Um, I've moved to America for a little while. I've met my wife. Oh, yeah. I, I, wanna, I, want, I want you to tell that story. That story ah. that you told me <laughs> of what happened in America. I want, I want you to tell that because I'm thinking, wow, that was... Um, that, you say, don't you, that destiny has a funny way of showing itself sometimes. And this it, this is what happened here, wasn't it? Fate stepped into your life and took you into the stratosphere yeah. with your fighting. But... It was nearly so bad, wasn't it? So, so 2001, uh, I, I, I thought uh, I've done. Every, I've won. A, I've won two world titles now. Uh, one in Australia, one against Orono. Um, I, I feel I feel complete, um, and I wanted a bit of change. My, one of my friends had just turned to boxing, and then I, every, everything I done in kickboxing, you're lucky to get a paragraph in the newspaper. And then one of my friends went to boxing. Next minute, he's headlining. Fox Sports every couple, once a month, and he's on the magazines and his front covers. And it's like, ah, oh, this is my time. I'm not getting nothing, and boxing seems to be the way to go. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to retire and go to boxing for a uh, thing. I was going to be a boxer. Mm. And then, um, yeah, so I end up having, a, 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 uh, end up winning uh, 13 fights for 10 wins, 10 knockouts. And then um, my, my last fight, I, I won the Australian title. My last fight, I was defending my title. Uh, so this guy comes out, he breaks his hand in the first. So so for 11 rounds, all he did was go, jab, hold me. Hold me for 30 seconds. All right, break, move around, jab, hold me. And then after 11 rounds, he won. Yeah. That's like, how the hell do you win? That's, <laughs> the, sh that's the shit. Yeah. Um, you know what? Fuck this. I'm sick of this. this is, I'm so I'm I'm so I'm so angry. Yeah. So I thought, you know what? I, I've got to get out of this country. I'm 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 sick of Australia. So I did a little thing online. Is there any gyms in America that want to take on a Thai boxing trainer slash fighter? And then within uh, ten minutes, I get a reply from uh, Master Toddy. Oh, nice. Um, hey, we'd love to have you and um uh, come to our gym and train and teach and fight out of our gym. And I'm like, oh, so where are you guys based? Oh, we're based in Vegas. Oh, you're based in Vegas. <laughs> That's amazing. So, so I fled to America. And then um, uh, I get to this gym and I'm talking to Master Tidy and everything else. And I'm looking around the walls and, and there's all these posters of this um, beautiful girl. She's got gold medals and trophies and world title belts. And, and she's pretty hot. <laughs> now, I, I, I'm asking all the guys, hey, who's this chick? She goes, oh, she's going to be here in a couple of days. She's fighting on the same show as you are in a few weeks' time. Ah, oh, beautiful. So, so one Sunday I go to the, the, the Vegas and I go down the um, walking around the casinos. Come back and she's there. And I, 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 I introduce myself. Oh, good day. Uh, oh, I'm John Wayne. How you going? And then uh, she goes, oh, I'm Angie. And there's one of those ones where we just we just locked eyes for the next six hours, mm. just chatting, da da da. And then uh, we end up going on our first date about five days later. Now uh, we go to the Bellagio, the casino for the buffet, mm. and then um, yeah. So from that moment forward, we were, we're now an item. So then uh, Master Toddy's is going okay, but uh, not the best. He's, he, mm. I'm, I'm pretty much running the gym and for fifty dollars a week, <laughs> and sometimes he wouldn't even pay me. Sometimes that would be nothing. <laughs> so you know, uh, so I, I made sure I lasted three months to do the right thing because he bought me a plane ticket. So at least I could do is give him two months, mm. and then um. Ooh, sorry, sorry, in <laughs> sorry. In Australia, that's a carton. If you, yeah. if you have your phone ring, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, so, so uh, I was working at a, a boxing gym. My Muay Thai wasn't really taking off in America, uh, so I was, I was making three thousand a month, and uh, my rent was fifteen hundred. So I, I had no money. I was struggling so hard, and the opportunity came to to come back to Australia and have a fight for five thousand dollars. So oh, I, I got to do it. So I fly back to Oz. Uh, I beat this guy, get 5,000. Uh, is is Angie pregnant at this point as well? 
Ah, uh, yes. Angie's yeah, pregnant. yeah. So, so Angie's pregnant uh, about six weeks after me meeting her. That's like, oh shit. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty quick. Mm. And then, um, uh, yes, yeah, so I go home. I go to come back again, and then the airport's like, "Where's your return ticket?" So oh, I don't have a return ticket. It's, it's in America already. I said, "Oh, until you show us a return ticket, you can't get on this plane." Ah, well, what do I do? I said, "Well, what you can do, you can buy a ticket now, and then when we get to LA, just just refund it." Ah, that sounds easy enough. Um, how much is that? Four and a half thousand dollars. Like ah, I've only got five. Ah, uh, you know what? Screw it. So I give over four and a half grand. So I get to LA, and then straight away the immigration's like, "All right, sir, when when was the last time you were here?" Ah, uh, I was here three three weeks ago. How long were you here for? I was here for three months. Three months. You're not allowed to stay here three months. Your visa's only allowed 90 days. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's three months. Mm. So he counts the days. 92. <laughs> You're two days over your visa. You're on the next plane back to Australia, buddy. I'm like, ah, oh, you're joking. You're joking. And then I'm like, oh, stop. You can't use that ticket. I've got another ticket in San Diego, but that's a four and a half thousand dollar ticket. Please, you can't use that ticket. Mm. Whatever you do, you can't. That's my whole life. I've got another ticket. Can you please let me get down to you? I swear, please, please. So I'm groveling and this guy goes, ah, fine. So, so Angie drove um, three hours to come pick me up. I wasn't allowed to see her. There was someone going backwards and forwards. So she had to drive three hours back to San Diego, get the ticket, drive three hours back again, um, drop the, and I wasn't allowed to see her at all this whole time. So I'm getting held in um, different parts of the airport for handcuffed, three coppers each side of me. Uh, led through the airport like I'm uh, Osama bin Laden. It was <laughs> terrible. It was, it was so shit. It was. I, I never felt so small my whole life. Mm. People just pointing at you, going, "Oh, look, yeah. there's a terrorist." It was terrible. And then, um, so I ended up getting held in the airport for 36 hours, and then finally fly back to Australia. And then I take that that ticket back to the counter. Can I please refund this ticket? I said, oh, unfortunately, there's going to be a six-week turnaround before we can get you that money for that ticket. So, so we'll let you know when we send it out to you. Say, so, ah, I've got a wife that's pregnant. I've got no money. I've got mm. no home. I've got no car. I've got no job. Mm. And then um, luckily, uh, Angie sold our whatever belongings we had to save enough money to get to Australia. And then from that moment forward, as soon as the promoters heard I was in Australia, my phone wouldn't stop ringing. Hey, can you fight on a super rate in three weeks? Hey, Super League wants you to fight in Holland. Can you come? Oh, it's K1 wants to sign you now. Oh, have you heard of a show called Contender? I was like, holy shit. Mm. Yeah, just, um, it was the biggest blessing. If I had to stay in the States, I still would have been teaching boxer size classes and it wouldn't, wouldn't have gone anywhere and I would have just faded away. But luckily, as fate has it, um, even though it was the worst day of my life, it was the biggest blessing I could ever have asked for. So, so lucky. Yeah. So, like you, you mentioned, then let's get onto a few of these um, because the super, the super league around Europe were massive at the time. I had all the elite guys from Europe. You, the um, the K one at the time. Obviously, you ended up fighting like Bukau and and did, uh, who else did you fight on that one? You, you fought some real big uh, names on the on the K one. Yeah, let's start. Let's uh, go, let's uh, have a, let's talk a little bit about the K one. Yeah. What was that like your first time? Because you fought in Japan a lot of times now, aren't you as well? Let's pull it back to your, your first time when you when you went there. Because Japan's a crazy place, isn't it? Oh, so it gets better. So, so I get asked to fight uh, for the S one uh, at Rajadam Dern Stadium in, in Bangkok. So it's an eight man tournament. So I have to have three fights in one day. So I fight I fight a Russian, uh, Skabowski from mm. France, and then I fight uh, Nintagan in the final. Uh, Nintagan's beaten me three times in the past. And this is our fourth fight, and um, I finally beat him. Mm. So I ended up winning a, a million baht, a world title, and a trophy from the Prime Minister of Thailand. And then, um, so two weeks later, I'm, I'm booked to fight in uh, Padova in Italy. So I stay in Thailand, I keep training. I jump on the plane by myself, I land in Italy. And then um, the promoter's like, okay, instead of you getting a, a room by yourself, you're going to share a room with uh, Ole Larson. So they, they squeeze another bed at, at, the, at the feet of Ole Alassan's um, two two beds mm -hmm. already. So we're squished in there for a week. Um, I fight uh, Fadi Mirza. Yeah, yeah. If Fadi so, was a strong fighter, Fadi, wasn't he? Yeah, mm -hmm. so I beat I, I fight Fadi over five rounds, beat him on points. So I, I beat the three guys in Roger Dimnern. Now I've just beat Fadi. I fly back to Australia and the promoter calls me saying, hey, um, there, there's been a late minute pullout in K1. Do you want to fight Dwayne Ludwig on K1 eliminations in 10 days? Uh, sure. <laughs> so a couple of days later, I'm back on the plane again. I fly to Japan and, and then um, I end up uh, beating Dwayne Ludwig. I drop him 
three times over three rounds and end up winning on points. So I had, I had five fights in four weeks in three countries. Yeah, it was, it was, it was my busiest month ever. Yeah. yeah, it was crazy. It was so cool. And then, yeah, win, 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 win. So mm. had some money in my pocket for once. And then uh, from the K1, they, after I beat Dwayne, then they signed me for one year for three fights. And then that, the next one was a tournament with Borkow and stuff. So, so at the start, so you want to hear something? Yeah, funny? yeah. So, so, when, so, so when I fought Ludwig the first time, it, uh, Borkow for uh, um, uh, Jordan Tai, mm. and uh, it was it was Borkow's first ever trip overseas. So then, because I could speak Thai, Borkow was like, "Hey, hey, John, hey, where are you going, man? Can, <laughs> can I come with?" You? He was like the biggest puppy. He was, he was like the ultimate puppy. So like, yeah, come on, little fella. <laughs> it was so cool and then um like we were besties it was really it was really amazing and then um a few months later is the k1 final so i i, I go back home train i fly back to japan i see Bork. hey so what do you out and he shuns me he gives me the cold shoulder i was like oh i thought we were the boys because <laughs> because now we're fighting each other oh. I, I thought but you know what it's like with tires you yeah know, yeah still be, but yeah of course yeah, he, yeah. Fully, he, he fully brushed me it's oh, like, <laughs> I was like, oh man, I thought we were cool. Yeah. And then, we, we, then, then, um, yeah. So we had uh three crazy rounds. I uh, got called a draw. Yeah, an then, extra uh, round. Then we, had, then we had to do an extension round. Mm. And then, uh, then it was one judge for me, and then two judges for Borkow. Mm. So he got me on the sweat points in the in the final. Oh, yeah. And then after that, he just tore through Kohi and Masato. I destroyed them all, he, didn't he? Yeah. And then that's that's when they changed the rules. Um, yeah, he kept, he kept throwing them all on floor, didn't he? That's why, yeah. Because um, back in the day, you were allowed to fly multiple knees as long yeah. as you were active. Like, and then after the ball count, they said, okay, rule change now. Only one knee in the clinch, then it's got to separate. Yeah. One knee, then separate. Yeah, I remember that and, because um, he used yeah. to throw everyone down, didn't he? He used to get them near him and then throw them on oh, floor. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. He, he made it look so easy. Yeah. yeah they, they had no answer. Mm. Yeah, he, he really showed the Thai dominance. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, just while we're on the subject of Japan, what were it like the first time you ever fought there? Because Japan, the fight scene is totally different to anywhere you will else see in the world. In Thailand, you've got all the crazy gamblers going crazy. And then in the UK, you've got all of the rowdy fans, same as in Australia, and etc., all making noise. But in Japan, it's just deadly silent while you're fighting, isn't it? Unless something crazy starts happening and they'll stand up and they'll be like, oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. So, it, it, just talk to us a little bit what that like the first time you actually went to Japan, and uh, what it was like, get, like getting there to experience that. Oh man! So you're, here we go. Here, here's a, here's a crazy story. So so Sengpin's trainer only had one leg, so he got his leg amputated because he had a uh, blood poisoning from smoking and drinking, and it was either we're gonna cut your leg off or you're gonna lose your life. So I right, take the leg. So he cut he cuts the leg off, and then um. So he, he starts training his son and he starts training his other son. And then that, that, there's a lot of commotion. For, you know, hear the pads. He, he's sitting on a chair. But he, bah, bah, and then mm. other boys start coming around. Is that what he did? He used to just sit down on old pads then? Yeah. Yeah, this is like early, early days. Right. The, when the boys were small too. Yeah. He didn't even have tie pads. He held pillows. He held pillows. <laughs> so they kicked the pillows. <laughs> and then, um, so then more and more students came and they started going to little shows and started getting money and then end up buying and getting a ring and, End up having one of the most famous gyms in Thailand, all for one leg. End up having a Rajanon boxing champion who ended up going on to be um, WBA world boxing wow. champion. Um, Sangten was the Rajanon champion. The son was the Rajanon champion. Um, just, just, just all well, one leg too. Crazy. So then, um, oh, so how's this one? So, so it was my my fight against Intergan at Lumpini. Uh, I, I had my last session on the Wednesday. Like just killed it. You know the one of those ones where all the ties around the ring and they're all just cheering. Yeah, me. yeah. There's there nothing I do that was wrong. Just everything was a high work rate. Um, but after the session, it was raining, and they go from house to house. It was like, I had to run in the rain a little bit, and then um, within half an hour, I started getting the chills and I like, lost my appetite. Mate, when that tie to... rain gets on you, the tie rain, it's 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 so people like the ties are terrified of it. Out they go, can't go in the rain. It'll make you sick. It'll make you sick. I remember when I lived there, for can't be that bad. Mate, I, I got yeah. caught in a shower one time and I was poorly for like a week, solid. It it ruined oh. me. I've no idea what yeah. it is, whether it's the pollution out there or what that gets sucked when it's evaporated in the clouds or what. But yeah. it fucks you up badly, that tyrane. So so I'm I'm in I'm in cold sweats and I'm trying to tell the ties I'm 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 sick. I don't think I can fight in two days. Oh no, no, no. Um whatever you do, don't tell Pa. Pa was down at the camp with the one leg. Mm. Don't tell Pa. It's okay, it's okay, don't tell Pa. 
So I've got a sweatsuit on. I've got to lose like five kilos. I'm feeling like shit. I was like, this is, but I do it anyway. We go to Lumpini, I weigh in. And then at night, even crossing the ropes hurt, like everything hurt. Mm. And then um, uh, Nindanan throws, Nindanan throws a couple of kicks. I'm checking them, that hurts, leg kicks hurt. End up going down round two or three and they're getting stopped. So we go back to the camp and then um, I go to bed, I'm, I'm pissed. Uh, and then the next morning at six in the morning, I hear John Wayne, come downstairs now. So, oh shit. So I go down the stairs. So there's Pa, Sangten, Sangten's wife, the brother, the, the other son, and they're all just looking at me. All right. So tell me, did you or did you not throw that fight for money last night? Fucking hell. <laughs> throw the money. Sorry, what? So did you or did you not throw that fight for money? I said, Pa, every one of these people here knew that I was sick and they all told me not to tell you. Everyone knows that I was sick. I didn't throw the money. Of course I didn't throw the fight, but everyone knew I was sick and, and I fought because I wasn't allowed to tell you. I'm going to ask you one more time. Did you or did you not throw the fight for money? I say, Pa, 100%. I swear on my life, I did not throw the fight. And then, um, so Sangten's been with Pa for like 20 years. Mm. Married his daughter. They got a kid together. So Pa's like, all right, I believe you. All right, Sangten, you and your wife, you got three hours. Get the fuck out of my camp. Oh, yes. Wow. So I'm standing there. I know. I'm standing there going, oh, this can't be happening. Yeah. Please, this can't be happening. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm just freaking out. And then sure enough, the removalist truck comes. They throw all the shit in the truck. Sanctin's gone. I'm like, oh. Wow. Oh, no. This is it's all because of me. And I didn't even throw the fight. They're the ones in yours. It was just. <laughs> crazy so crazy so then um so i knew where sanctum was living it was part of our run that went we go past his house where he's in his new unit and then um and then uh, uh so i go back to australia and then um paul calls hey uh can you come back to thailand i got you a, a fight in japan a hundred thousand baht oh really holy shit uh, that's that because I was like making 20,000. I've right? got to say, when you're living in Thailand, that's a lot of money. That one for it's a, yeah. that's a big fight purse, yeah. So, so, so 20,000 is approximately a thousand Aussie, and then you have to give 50 50. Mm. So, it was, I was 500, and now I was a hundred thousand. It's like, oh, that's the most money I've ever heard. That's mm. insane. Um, so I go back to Thailand. So, I do the sneaky. So, I go and I go to so Sengtin's changed camps at this stage. So, I do the sneaky, I go train with Sengtin. And then uh, I'm living with Sang Ten, and then about oh, I don't know two weeks before the fight, one of the boys that lives in the neighborhood he comes on his push bike, and he's like, "Hey John Wayne, uh, Pa said if if you don't um, come back to the camp, he's going to have you arrested for, for running away <laughs> for running away from Jim." So so what happened was um, so a hundred thousand baht. So Pa said, "Hey, can you go down to the office and we'll get fifty thousand now." And then just so we can survive why the times and then after the fight we'll get down to 50. so i jump on a taxi by myself go to bangkok by myself no idea what i'm doing i i get my fifty thousand. i sign away for it i get back to the camp and and pa's like i'll tell you what i do i'll take 40 you take 10 and then after the fight we'll do the voice voice I'll, I'll give you 40 and but but for now i need this 40 so we can so i can uh sure so then i run away and i, I train with sangtin and then the kid comes on the bike and he goes, um, you have to come back to Sengtens now because uh, Pa told the Pa is going to tell the police that you stole the fifty thousand, and because you signed for it, because you signed for it, it's got all your name on it. So technically, you had the fifty. So he's going to he's going to use it against you. It's like, wow! Fuck. <laughs> wow! Oh, man. People yeah, all think guess. it's I'm off to Thailand to live the dream, but not yeah. really. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so so I go back to the camp. Um, so, uh, Pa hires a, a pad holder for me for the next seven days before I leave. And then it's me and Pa. We go to Japan, but just me and him in 1998. And, and I'm fighting Kohi he, as the main event at, at Kyle Corn Hall. And then, um, yeah, so, so the first night we stay in a cheap hotel. And then, because Pa's got one leg, um, the, next, the next morning I knock on his door. He goes, ah, last night I was busting for a piss and I, I couldn't be bothered going to the toilet, so I just pissed the bed. I'm like, oh, awesome. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's just what I want to hear. So then, um, so then, so then, 
So then we go, we go, we, we train for a couple of days, and then we go to the stadium, and then the the change rooms are downstairs. And Pai's like, oh look, I can't, I got one leg, so I can't go down there. Let me talk to one of the other Thai trainers to see if they can wrap your hands and get you ready. So I go down, some randoms wrapping my hands, and then um, we go up, and then I'm having the fight. So then Pai doesn't even come to the corner; he sits in the front row. And because everything's hand signals, because he's got, he can't hold pads, so so T round knee T, and then uh, every in between rounds, I just look over him, and then he give me hand signals of what to do next. All right, block and chop, block and chop. Yeah. Uh, yep, 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 yep. So I end up end up beating Koei, um went the distance five rounds, and we're getting the win. And then um, yeah, it was sort of like one of those ones where oh sorry, there was, there was a Japanese reporter that was living in Thailand at the time, and every time I fought in. Thailand should do um, reports back to the magazines. So somehow or other, I was already a, a, a name in Japan before I got there. And after I beat Kohi, that solidified everything. So so that sort of helped me blow up again. Mm. And then I ended up having four fights in Japan over the next uh, two years. And then uh, sort of not much for a little while. And then the K1 came to the table. And then once I started fighting with K1, I think I was on, back in those days, you're lucky to make $5,000. Yeah. And then K1 was going to sign me for 12 US a fight. I was like, 12 US, holy shit. Oh, this is retirement money. <laughs> <laughs> Back in them days, for 12 grand. Yeah, 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 it's a lot, yeah, yeah. And then, um, yes, I had the, so yeah, Fort Borkow, Fort Kraus, fought a gentleman called Aslan, um, fought another uh, gentleman, I forgot his name, but yeah, um, did really well. Uh, and the K1 was so cool. Like you are saying, you'd have 10,000 people plus in the stadium. And you could hear a pin drop. Yeah. 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 You're trying to put on a show, and you, and then if it was a, like a crazy combination, you might get a oh, back to silence <laughs> again. But uh, yeah, it was so so bizarre, it was so crazy, and so and every kick you can hear, every kick you can hear your opponent breathing. Yeah. You can hear the judges writing on the scorecards with their pens, like in, like complete silence. You know? Yeah, but it I was so, it, so eerie. Yeah, it was like the first time I fought there, I was about seventeen, I think. And I, I, there were no time music. There were no nothing. There were no. I, it was just so surreal. And they put six ounce gloves on me as well. I was, I was like, what the fuck? Like, fucking hell! What's going on here? But yeah, it's a, it's a crazy place. How did the? Uh, you said you're already a bit of a name, but how did the Japanese fans react to seeing you fight in the flesh? Then. Oh no, it was really cool. It was, yeah. it was really um, um, oh, you, you, the first time you get asked for signatures. Yeah. And photos. Oh, they love that shit they over got- there as well, don't they? You, you, you know those gold signature boards they have? Yeah. yeah. Have you seen those ones? They're like a hard cardboard. Yeah. With those. They're like proper minted. And they give you the proper pens. And, yeah. And then uh, I was noticing everyone had a little emoji before emojis. So they do the signature, then they do like a guy riding a skateboard or they do a guy like something or something. Oh, fuck, I need an emoji. Yeah. So, uh, so I, I, I practiced my signature and uh, I thought, should I do a gun? Should I do this? And, and I remember the old West shorts had the cowboy hat. Yeah. Ah, the cowboy hat. So I started incorporating the cowboy hat to my signature. And then uh, all of a sudden, when you give someone, they go, oh, oh, so good, so good. <laughs> it was, it was, it was like, re- really cool. It was just fun. Coming back. It wasn't until K- no, sorry, until K1, on. sorry, that, uh, that you realize how fanatical the fans are. So they pretty much live in the foyer of the hotel for um, seven days. And then every time the lift would open, just uh, 20 people would run towards the, the, the lift trying to get a picture or an autograph or... Or a, or a selfie, or a, mm. it's like, whoa, this is insane, this is crazy. And you'd have to get mentally prepared to go downstairs every time because you knew it would be 20 minutes of crap before you got outside. Yeah. Stuff. But, but that's what makes it fun too. Yeah, I just want to go back, because we've nearly done an hour already, but we've got five minutes. And I, well, I, don't, I know we're exactly where we are now for when we do part two, because part two I want to start with The Contender because I fucking loved Ooh. that show. But yeah. we can't start on it yet because... That alone is going to take about 30 minutes to get through all yeah. the fights, all what went on in that house, because I absolutely loved that show. Uh, it was like yeah. Big Brother, but like the Thai boxing version, it was amazing. But I just want to go back to what I about K1. I want to ask you about the Bukau fight. When you, obviously, when you were you were going to go against him, is the old that he did that surprised you? Or did you know that he was going to be really fast, good left kicks, etc.? Had you seen him fight a lot back at then? Uh... Well, well, the Jordan Thai fight was the first time that he'd really shown himself internationally. Yeah, no one back, really knew, did those, they? Yeah, yeah. Back, back back in those days, it was all VHS. Yeah. There was no, there was no, there was DVDs, but there was uh, mm. it wasn't like an iPhones and YouTube and yeah. all that sort of stuff like it is today. So uh, yeah, I had no idea. And then um, yeah, the, the, what I noticed was his his left kick and his teeth. Yeah. Extraordinary, yeah. like ridiculously fast. Like 
by the time you've even gone and think about parrying, it's already gone. Left kick was, but but not powerful, fast yeah. but not just snappy. Strong. Yeah, just snappy. And yeah. then um, and then I was just trying to. My thing back then was uh, my my hands were my advantage in my boxing. Um, the ties were good at kicking, but they I, I could set up my hands and set up everything else. But uh, he was he was so fast and so strong, but um. Yeah, I was I was quite happy that we got a draw at the first time, and then um, knowing that he went through Kohi and Masato quite but easily. To be I, fair, I, I he, de- very proud. he destroyed everyone around that time, didn't he? As well, for to take it to a draw, actually, it's, that's fucking amazing on its own. Because back then, yeah. I, I don't think people realised how like in his training regime at Paul Pramuk Gym. I remember looking at it one time, and he used to do like one round on the pads for thirty minutes non-stop. Yeah. And I was like, "How the fuck can you kick pads for thirty minutes? That's like the the engine the guy had on him. It's insane." Yeah, so crazy. He, he was so fit. And then, um, so we got the fight in Japan, and then uh, a few years later on the champion champions. Yeah, I fought, I, countries, I fought on that one with you. Out, out of all the countries, we had the fight in Jamaica. Yeah. Like, of, like who, who fights in Jamaica? Yeah. It's, it's like, what the heck? What a, what a, what a trip that was. That was so cool. And, and that was my, my 100th fight. My yeah. 100th fight was against Borkow in Jamaica. Ah, so I didn't get the cool. win, unfortunately. But, um, and then currently I'm on 149. Mm. And I'm on 99 Muay Thai wins. Yeah. So, uh, that's for my boxing as well. So, um, so if I could get one more, if I could... If I could lure yeah. Borkow for just yeah, yeah. So he's my one hundred and my one hundred and fiftieth, that'd be the perfect yeah. where I could so it'd be just uh, my OCD would be perfect then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To be fair though, ninety nine fucking Muay Thai wings for a Western, it's almost of it. Like I, I I mentioned this to you before, like no one these days is gonna be racking up them numbers anymore because. Like all the up and young up and coming fighters and stuff, then they don't. It's not like they, they can be bothered going to do any of this anymore. They just want to get straight on these big shows, and they don't just want to fight and get the experience. Like when we were coming up, it was just like, do you want to fight? Yeah, do you want to fight? Yeah. yeah. Now it's like all these fighters went, no, I need to do a twelve week camp, and I need my nutritionist on board, and I've got to do this, and yeah. I need to do strength and conditioning, and blah blah. blah. Just fucking get in and fight when you when you're. That's all I ever tell anyone from my gym. When you're on your way up. Just fight wherever you can. Don't matter what you win or lose. Just fight your hardest. Let everyone know you've got heart and just get the experience wherever you go. That's what I, how I think it should be. Oh, definitely. So kickboxing, Muay Thai, if you have to wear the chest guard and the headgear, and then it's still like a hard spot. It's still, you're still competing. Yeah. Um, I was doing uh, anything, taekwondo fights, just to fill in the gaps, just to mm. be, be busy. Um, and, and being used in front of crowds and all that sort of stuff, it all, it all pays dividends later on. Um, but yeah, it's uh, well, like you said, uh, like uh, I, I don't want to sound crazy, but you see the kids these days, and and someone makes a hundred thousand dollars, and they're like, oh, he only made a hundred thousand dollars, and it's like fucking hell, a hundred thousand bucks, yeah, Holy huh? shit. yeah, <laughs> that's taken me a lifetime to not even get even close to yeah. that. So, and then um, but yeah, and then if you say anything, oh, you're just saying that because you're you're trying to help the promoter. It's like no. I, I'm appreciative of my two thousand, my five thousand, or if I got ten thousand, like all that counts. So for some, for someone to get a hundred thousand in one fight, mm. that's that's like that doesn't get any better. Yeah. Uh, but but I guess we're just the dinosaurs now. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> still, still, we still got life in us left yet, man. Yeah. Don't, yeah it's just... <laughs> but instead of instead of instead of fighting because you love fighting, it's uh, I'm fighting because I want to make get rich. That's like, what it, it, it seems to me now that the reasons for fighting are just different. The fighting for the fame, the money, the Instagram likes. Whereas we were just fighting, there were no Instagram, there were no no, no YouTube and all this business. There were no big fame. All we were doing was doing it because we just loved doing it. Ooh. so so uh, when I was in Thailand, so before phones, so before before the internet, really. Mm. I had no, I had no hotmail. I had nothing. So if I wanted to talk to mum, I'd have to write a letter, and then it was seven days to get to Australia, and then seven days to get back. So, so when I got to be the first Aussie to fight Lumpini, hey mum, oh you wouldn't believe it, I'm the first Australian to fight at this famous stadium. And then two weeks later, oh congratulations, like she has no idea. Congratulations, <laughs> son. I'm, it sounds like a big deal. I'm so proud of you. It's like, oh, thanks, mom. Yeah. <laughs> but these these day and age, if you did that and posted on Instagram, I'd be like, oh, yeah, of course, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I got, I got one letter from mom saying, congratulations, son. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, crazy right, mate. We're just coming up to an hour now, so we're gonna start part two. 
with the contender. Um, and there's still a lot to go after that. It might have to be a free part, to be fair. But just before we go finish, though, uh, I've got a question for you on here. And this oh. is... Uh, is this, this is from Andy. No, no it's, from, it's from Andy. No, it's, I, it's actually I, it's from... from um, Andy asking if we had a good time in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is actually from Schooly. I run the podcast with. He's in the, the computer room over there doing all the digital things. But, so... If you had to pick any fighter for these questions, past or present, it could be anyone, boxing, uh, Muay Thai, K1, anything. One to party with, one to take psychedelics with, and one to rob a bank with. Who oh, <laughs> with the bid? Uh, so one to party with, who's that? I reckon Deckers. Yeah, I reckon yeah. Deckers. I've heard some stories about Deckers. Man, I've heard a few Italian. stories. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so, so when he came, when he came to Australia, he had one of his boys fighting Nathan Corbett, and then um, the promoter calls me saying, "Hey, look, unfortunately, they can't train here because Nathan's training here. Uh, is it okay if um, Raymond Deckers brings his boy to train at your gym for the week?" I'm like, "Wow, oh, yes." <laughs> so, um, every day Deckers at the gym in the morning doing his session, and then. Um, We'd go for lunch and it'd be like 11 in the morning. We're like, oh, what can I get you, Raymond? He goes, I'll have a beer, please. <laughs> what uh, a guy. <laughs> uh, it's it, it, it's 11 in the morning. He goes, yes, but in Holland, it's nighttime. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I, every morning I get him beers, getting beers, getting beers. And then his fighter has his fight against Nathan. Um, after the fight, we go to the, to the nightclub. I'm like, hey, Raymond, I'll go get you a beer. He goes, no, stop, stop, stop. Okay, now the fight is over. Now we party. <laughs> okay. So I want a, uh, a double vodka on the rocks. Uh, you, do you want some Coke or some orange? No, no, no. Double vodka on the rocks. That's all. <laughs> like, oh, holy shit. You haven't even got a warm up drink yet. That, that's his warm up. Yeah. And then uh, needless to say, oh, ro- loose. Yeah. Loose as, yeah. But, but awesome. So much fun. So much, so much fun. Next one. Is there any fighter you could think it would be good to take psychedelics with? And go on a crazy. Is, 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 is Joe Rogan considered a partner? Yeah, you can do it, mate. Uh, you have to, have to be Joe. It's got to be on it. It's got to be. It has to be. It yeah. has to be Joe. Uh, and the yeah. last one, the last he, one. He could personally introduce you to all the entities. Hey, this is my yeah, yeah. little buddies. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and the last one, if you're going to rob a bank, who are you picking? I guess you. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Right. I'll, wait in, I'll wait in the car. I'll wait in the car. Yeah. <laughs> Get away, driver. Right, mate. Uh, that, that's, that, that has absolutely flown. So, yeah. Part two will be incoming, um, so keep an eye out for it. We'll get that done in the next couple of weeks as well. We'll start on the contender because I'm looking forward to hearing a ball about that. But there's, we need to go on to the the, the Yodson Clay saga that we've missed out as well. So we need to get out of that one. Uh, yeah, Zambidis too. Zambidis yeah, is a triple. As there's well. Zambidis as well. So there's going to be a lot more to to go through there, mate. Thank you for for your time, and uh, I'll be in touch when we can get the the next part filmed, mate. Thank you so much for having me on. It's, um, it's, uh, I've been a fan of you, and then we've been buddies for so long, and it's an absolute pleasure. So thank you. Thank you very much, mate. Right, cheers for listening, guys.